So today I'm joined by Barry French, who's joined me to chat about his musical career. Barry, welcome to Totally Music. Would you like to introduce yourself? Right, yeah. Um, well, um, I'm a drummer um, who's played in lots of bands in the Leicester area um, and in Birmingham as well, where I used to live. Um, so my history is predominantly in rock and metal music. Um, however, um, I'm here talking about an electronic project that I've started um, under the project name of Opinion, although it isn't actually written as Opinion, it's written really weird, but uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> thank you. All right, it's good to have you on. Um, so what got you into music? Well, my parents um, always had music on around the house, so they were never musicians themselves. Um, but a lot of the music artwork from there, I mean, my mum's era was the 80s, and so there's always CDs around the house. And so, like, I, I think of, like, artwork, like Labour of Love 2, which is quite um, surreal in its own way, um, kind of Picasso-like, um, and the iconic Dire Straits one with um, the guitar on it, uh, Brothers in Arms, just, just things like that just kind of... Like, I think they sow seeds that, even though it's not the music, because I was never really into them musically, um, I think it just, you know, it all just kind of imprints on you. And so, um, you know, I just, I mean, my my journey into actually kind of wanting to become a musician started probably when um, first, I think, Michael Jackson CD I got, um, and then Oasis was probably my, the band that made me feel like I want to be a musician, although it was really a singer at the time. I only started playing instruments after my voice broke, and I didn't know how to handle that. So that's how I got into music, basically. Nice. Um, so what are your musical inspirations? I mean, they're so fast. I mean, it's um, it's really hard to um, narrow it down. I mean, I, I, I mean, I say Oasis have to be there predominantly is the first one but I mean just um trying to think about things really um given I mean classical era I absolutely love Beethoven and Chopin really love the sonatas and uh, Beethoven and the nocturnes of Chopin in particular they get played a lot um modern 20th century composers like Olivier Messiaen who did some very strange works, but they kind of resonate a lot with me in a weird way. Um, and then like in terms of like rock stuff, I love Rush and Dream Theater, the kind of prog stuff, but um my most um up to date influence, I suppose, over the last couple of years has been Aphex Twin. Um and that's what's drove me to the musical direction I'm going in at the moment. Um, so you're currently working on an electronic project in your final year of music at university. Would you like to tell us about it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm creating an EP which is going to be called Regeneratio, which is the Latin word for rebirth. It felt quite appropriate to me because so much of my life has been spent doing rock and metal. I never used to like electronic music, um, really. Um, I mean, I kind of did as a kid through playing computer games but i never realized that as an adult until i was an adult but um essentially um it, i mean it's the last word for rebirth regeneratio so very much for me it was me being reborn so it felt like an appropriate title um for it so there's um there's some break core and glitch style tracks on there. So a lot of very fast break beats that are manipulated with a lot of sampling. Uh, there's going to be some piano music on there as well because Aphex Twin was well known. I think his most well known piece other than probably Come to Daddy is uh, Avril 14, which is a beautiful piano piece. Um, so there's a couple of piano pieces on there that kind of hit different parts of Aphex Twin's repertoire. Um, and then there's some prepared piano as well, which um, if you don't know, prepared piano is where um, you put things like wooden pegs and rubber mutes and you can put ping pong balls inside the piano and it makes these really percussive sounds. 
and um, so a couple of the pieces I'm working on for the album, sort of the EP, are um, of that sort of thing as well. So it's a lot of different things going on, but it is predominantly electronic music. Um, so what's your favourite song from the EP and why? Um, it's really hard to um, say one because they all have, I mean, Naturally, if I wasn't happy with them, they wouldn't <laughs> go on the EP. <laughs> but um, probably, um, pro I, I think probably the one I think most people would like, um, if they like really fast stuff, is um, a, a track called Friendly Mr. Mydriasis, which sounds like a weird title, and I'll come <laughs> on to that in a moment. Um, why? <laughs> why that title? But um, it's just got... A, it starts off with a beatbox that is just sped up really fast and then it just kind of you just get hit with just lots of beats at once it's um yeah so that's probably the one i think will make most people stand up and pay attention well um so what was the most challenging aspect of creating the ep and why i mean i mean there's a, a few things that were um challenging really I, I think um yeah maintaining discipline is difficult because you say so you've got a virtually unlimited library of sounds to choose from and so you've got to kind of go into a song with the concept of what you want to do um uh, so kind of like how Monet would have um, treated these paintings as lilies he would have had an idea in his head potentially before he started painting otherwise you end up with a, a mix of incoherent ideas so that's probably the best thing. Knowing when enough is enough with a track as well. Sometimes you can labour over it. I mean, I mean, some of the some of the tracks I've got have forty or fifty different sounds in them. I think one of them has even close to seventy, and it's just like, yeah, you've, you've got to you've got to just reach a point where you say if you're really nitpicking, it, it's probably good enough. So just move on to the next one. That's a skill I've learned through doing the degree, really. Um, musically, when I was younger, I always used to just put, throw everything in the kitchen sink at every piece of music I ever did. But I think now I've realised there's a bit more discipline involved. And so, um, yeah, I think in electronic music, that that's the biggest challenge uh, for me. And also the mix inside for me as well. Um, because my left hearing is nowhere near as good as my right. I um, got an ear infection, which just, I don't know what it did, but it just caused damage, um, permanent. Um, and also in, uh, along with that, the cochlea is damaged. And so I hear music a semitone higher in my left ear than my right ear. So um, get it, luckily because of the fact I've lost a lot of the hearing, it isn't as bad. It kind of almost makes all the music I do have a chorus effect. So I have to kind of be careful to make sure other people listen to my mixes for me. So it's no different to a chef who's got an allergy asking someone else to taste their food for them. And that's kind of the way I just look at it. So, yeah. Um, so what have you learned during the creation um, that will help you in the future? Um, Kind of tied in with the knowing when enough's enough, really. I think just kind of just have it, just go with the courage and convictions. I mean... I'm the person that's creating this stuff, so I know what works and what doesn't, hopefully, more than anyone else would, especially regarding rhythm, because I am like a very good drummer. Um so yeah, the music's gotta please me. It, it everyone else is a secondary consideration, so don't and I don't mean that in a bad way. What I mean by that is like, you know, I've got to please my own tastes. Um I'm not a producer that's trying to get a Grammy. I'm just I'm doing it for my own pleasure and hopefully anyone that enjoys niche genres of break call will go along with it. So um so yeah just be just being able to believe in yourself. Um if you can't if you can't express your own personality in the music 100 percent it's really not you know how can I expect anyone else to kind of believe uh, what I'm doing and you know, it's a little bit of a cliched thing to say, but as much as I think I know, I've only scratched the surface. The yeah, scratched the surface of what there is to know about electronic music. It, it's just it's an endless learning experience, um, which 
anyone can say about any genre, but I think I'm much closer to the start of my journey, whereas in the rock music, I feel like I'm a lot further down the road. So, yeah, I think that's just what I've learned, just just how much I really do still have to learn. <laughs> Um, so if you could perform the EP anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? It's not really performable. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's um, it's really not. I mean, I would just be standing on a on a stage doing Jesus hands while <laughs> pressing a button, uh, while while there'd be eighty thousand people like screaming while <laughs> dancing their heads off. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean. If the music could be performed anywhere or at least played, I would love it to be like while Apex Twin was in attendance uh, at a big festival or something. Like, it'd be really cool to see people's reaction to uh, the music. So that would be my dream. Although it, you know, that that's close <laughs> to a performance as you'll ever get. I think. Um, so finally, what's next for you? Um. Well, I've got to get the EP finished because it's not. Um, it's going to it's going to be released closer to the end of 2024 i feel um i haven't got a date yet these things take time to release into the domain so um really it's getting something finished from a degree so then i can actually kind of fo focus on getting it finally released after that it will be creating more electronic music but doing the different things I, one thing i've always wanted to do is a live performance where I use a lot of hardware like guitar effects, pedals and um, stuff like that and manipulate a loop that's on my laptop so it starts off sounding like a clean, I'll take a cello for example, get a really nice cello motif and then I'll just manipulate that so by the end of the performance it sounds nothing like a cello at all so it's kind of like very it's kind of meditative because it just takes so long to get to the end. So that's the sort of thing that I'd like to do. My um, my days of performing at gigs um, in a rock sense are over, really. So I want to kind of just explore different ways to express myself. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping that writing and performing in a different way to what I've ever done before will be the ways forward for me. Sorry, that's a bit of a convoluted <laughs> answer. <laughs> nice. Um, so a massive thank you, Barry, for joining me on Talk the Music. If anyone would like to check out Barry's music, I'll leave all the links in the description below for you. But thank you. Thank you.